Hi guys, welcome back. Today I thought we'd have a little look at green wood and how I keep it green. So some of you might ask why green wood? Uh, well, personally, I prefer green wood to carve. It's nice and soft. It cuts better for me. Um, and it's just easier in general to work with. You can leave your wood to dry a little bit, but it's much tougher to carve. Uh, it's much, uh, uses much more muscle. So you risk then of having a little slip and an accident. And if you do, it's going to hurt more than if it was green wood because you're putting more muscle into it. Um, you also do, if you let the wood to dry, it does lessen the risk of the wood cracking. But if, you, if you're willing to take the risk, it's much easier to carve green wood. Uh, some of you might ask what green wood is. Well, green wood is essentially straight off the tree. So you've cut it, you've barely given it any time um, to, to start to dry out and then you're preserving it so that it stays green. It might just be that you've got a couple of branches. You're gonna get around to them nice and quick. It might be you've taken down nearly a whole tree or a good few chunks. There's no way you're going to get around to carving that piece of wood before it dries out. So you want a way to preserve it and stop it from doing that. So there is a number of ways. Uh, I myself only really use one, uh, but you can freeze the wood if you've got a freezer. You might want a chest freezer out in your garage or uh, your shed or something. You can freeze your wood. You just wrap it up in a plastic bag bung it straight in the freezer. Uh, some people paint the ends uh, with uh, like a gloss or a blackboard paint, something like that that's going to give it a nice watertight seal. Um, and that seems to work well for them. But me, I use the underwater method. So I soak all of my wood underwater, plunge it underwater uh, for as long as I need it. And it stays just like the day I cut it. It's really good stuff. It even keeps the smell out. Woods like bay and apple, which you'll see I have out there at the moment, still when I'm carving them, have that distinctive smell. So it really does preserve them well. The only thing is there's a little bit of maintenance to do with it, but we'll talk through that as we go. Okay guys, so this is how I store my wood. As you can see here, I've just got big plastic tubs, relatively inexpensive. Once you've bought them, you've got them. And that's how I store my wood. So just here, I've got some apple wood stewing away very nicely. I've got some bay, and recently I've got some hazel branches, which will make brilliant, either small miniature spoons, or they'll make great wood spirits at the sizes of lengths they are. Now you might see the brick on top. You might be wondering what that is. Well, some woods, um, do tend to float a little bit more than others and also the smaller the branches they do to, more likely to float because they're lighter so just to keep them there I gently place a brick on top obviously you don't want to drop it on there or rub it around because it is going to damage the bark and if you want to keep the bark that's not a good thing but just gently place a brick or something heavy over them try to move the brick though every now and then because you do run the risk of it then warping the wood so unless it is a nice flat purchase which I haven't got at the moment that's the best thing to do just every now and then just give it a little bit of a move now water sitting there becoming stagnant obviously it will rot and it will um, start to smell it will start going cloudy and you will get algae building up in there my general rule of thumb is every weekend I just empty that water and change it again for something fresh um, you will notice a bit of a smell and if you've had a particularly hot week of temperatures over say 20 degrees C um, for most of the week you'll notice you might want to change it a little more regularly than just once a week um, because that smell does tend to build up and in colder times quite equally you won't need to so much because the algae doesn't build up also the other thing I'd recommend is I have uh, very opaque tubs they don't let much light through so that also limits the amount of algae build up I've also got lids for these, as you can see, just there in the background, which I'll be putting back on these very soon. But uh, obviously you wouldn't see much if the lids were on there at the moment. That's basically all it is. So I'm just going to run you now onto what I do once I've cut the wood, if it's going to take me a couple of days to carve indoors. OK, so that's the main preserving process is just submerging your logs, your branches underwater. Nice and simple, nice and easy. Just use a hose or a watering can, or if you've got a, a well-supplied water butt outside, use that as well. Um, Rainwater, it's a bit come and go depending on what the weather's like, so you could use that as well, but just make sure it's regularly emptied and changed. And as well, make sure that your water level is above anything you want to save. Anything poking out will begin to dry out. 
so you want to submerge anything that you want to keep if it's just a tiny little bit of branch you couldn't be bothered to cut off then it's not the end of the world is it but it will dry down to the point where the water touches it so just be aware of that as well now when I've cut some of my wood sometimes I think it's a bit small I might lose it in the bottom of the water if I wanted to carve it indoors so I've got another little method which builds on from that and that is plastic baggies so all it is is a ziplock bag once I've cut up some of my wood I split it um, I might have even axed it or if I'm working on something that might take me a few nights I'll do this in between just to make sure it stays wet so all I've got in the bag is a wet cloth this is um, just a any old dishcloth type thing will do um, this is one of those silly fleecy little things that get stuck in your um, in your hands but it keeps the moisture really well and with a ziplock bag you're not going to lose any moisture in, in amongst that and then inside as you can see I've just got my split logs sitting there just as green and damp as when I cut them these were cut about a week ago not in the slightest dried out they will change color a little bit on the surface but if you're going to carve that it's not the end of the world and as it dries it will go back to its normal color so you might think oh no I've ruined the wood you really haven't it's going to look good still don't don't worry and then just in between just wrap it back up in the cloth make sure it's damp it's not it doesn't have to be soaking wet you don't have to be walking around with a potential leak anywhere just a damp cloth um, damp enough that if you were washing yourself with a flannel and wring it out that's all you need to do um, just get it wet wring it out put it in your bag and off you go and I mean I've never really had much of a problem with that smelling um, just obviously give it a wash in between so once you've not got anything you got wrapped up in there give it a bit of a wash a bit of soap and water will do hanging out to dry give it a moment to dry and then start again and that's it's that simple and it really makes such a difference to your carvings it really does especially if like me you prefer to use green wood or found wood that works well you could use the same sort of thing if you've got dry wood um, and you want to rehydrate it that could work it's not something I've really tried but I have heard on the grapevine that does make life a bit easier. Uh, things like pine, if you were to buy it from the shops um, or, or anything like that, uh, or lime wood that's a bit dry, you can soak it and submerge it and it will loosen it up a bit. But yeah, that works well for me anyway. Thanks for listening. If you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can do. And obviously, as usual, hit the like and share button and subscribe button if you, uh, if you really do like to uh, like it. So... Thanks. Cheers. Bye-bye.